Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clay, and I am the Bucks Believer. This past offseason, the Bucks traded Eric Bledsoe, George Hill, three first-round picks, and two first-round pick swaps to the New Orleans Pelicans in exchange for Drew Holiday. This deal has had a huge impact in how both teams have constructed their rosters. For the Bucks, it has put them into a bit of a conundrum in terms of the salary cap as they have had to acquire multiple players on cheap deals in order to stay under the luxury tax. That meant uh, getting guys on minimum contracts such as Bryn Forbes and Torrey Craig, and it also has meant acquiring players that are on rookie deals. The Bucks acquired four of those guys both during the draft and after the draft, and I think that each of these four guys could have an impact on the NBA's landscape throughout their careers. Let's start off by talking about the 45th pick out of Louisville, Jordan Nora. Nora is a sharpshooter. He is a 6'6-ish wing who is fully capable of knocking down catch-and-shoot jumpers at a very high rate. He showcased that in his one G League game so far this year that he played with the Salt Lake City Stars, in which he scored 26 points on 9 for 14 shooting and made three of his five threes. Nuora is someone who I am very confident will be able to slide into the Bucks rotation by his third or fourth year in the NBA because he's going to be able to space the floor at a very high level for Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton. Nuora has his flaws as he's not a super great athlete, he has a hard time getting around defenders, and he also isn't quite as good of a movement shooter as someone like Duncan Robinson, who he's been compared to in the past, is. But I do think that Nuora's ability to knock down catch-and-shoot looks is going to be very valuable to NBA teams moving forward. There's also a question of his defense, as he was a bit of a liability on that end during his time in college, but I think that he has a solid enough build, and he seems to read the game at a high enough level that he'll be okay on defense, even if he's never necessarily a plus defender. The last flaw in Nora's game is his passing. So far this year for Milwaukee, he has posted zero assists, and I think that's pretty telling of just how poor his passing vision is as he's played 10 games. Even if his minutes have been pretty scarce across those 10 games, he should still have picked up at least one assist at some point. So with Nora, I see him as a sharp shooting wing who can attack a closeout every once in a while. Is he going to be someone who can manufacture offense for himself? Not necessarily. He's also not probably going to be a high level defender, and in terms of playmaking, well, there's not much to see here. But that shooting is a valuable skill, and I think that definitely warranted Nora being taken halfway through the second round and I liked him a little bit better than his 45th slot as on my pre-draft board, I had him at 42. That is actually behind the Bucks' second second round pick in Sam Merrill, who I had ranked as my 29th favorite player in the draft class. My reasoning for that was I thought Merrill was the best shooter in the class. I thought that he had the best chance to become something like what Duncan Robinson has been for the Miami Heat over the past two seasons. During his time at Utah State, he showed an elite ability to make shots both off of dribble handoffs, off of flare screens, off of off-the-ball movement, as well as off of pull-ups. He's genuinely just an excellent shooter. He's also a better passer than Nora, and I think that there might be a little bit of upside here for him to be a secondary or maybe even a primary ball handler who can actually spend some time on the ball instead of just being an off-the-ball shooter like I see with Nora. Merrill also has a bit more defensive potential in my opinion because he's genuinely a guy who can see the court at a very high level. That allows him to use his six foot five frame to its maximum potential. He is not a great athlete and that could cause trouble for him both on offense where he might not be able to create separation, and on defense, where he may not be able to keep high-level players in front of him. But I do think that Merrill is going to be a really solid NBA player at some point in his career, and the fact that the Bucks were able to get him with the 60th pick was a steal in my opinion. I'm a big fan of Merrill, and moving forward, I think that he has a chance to take on a role that is pretty similar to what Bryn Forbes has been for Milwaukee so far this season. The third guy that the Bucks have added out of this 2020 draft class is Mamadi Diakite. 
They signed him to a two-way contract following the draft, and there are a lot of Bucks fans that are very excited about his potential. I do have to say that I don't quite see it as much as many people seem to, but Diakite is certainly someone who could potentially be a back end of the rotation player. Do I think he'll ever be a starter like many Bucks fans seem to? No, not necessarily. But his ability to set screens and rim run is certainly a valuable trait, and we've seen plenty of NBA players make a living off of just being able to do that. In addition, Diakite does have a bit of additional offensive upside as he appears to have a three-point jump shot that has come along a little bit. In college at Virginia, he was a 36% shooter on low volume during his senior season, and so far in the G League, where he's played with the Lakeland Magic, that has carried over a little bit as he shot 7 for 14 from the three-point line. As an offensive big guy who can set screens and roll to the rim while also being able to pop out and knock down the occasional three-pointer, Diakite certainly appears to have a skill set that could be beneficial to an NBA team. And that's without diving into his defensive potential. Diakite blocks shots at a very high level, especially for someone who is only 6'9". He's averaging 2.1 blocks per game so far this year for the Magic, the Lakeland Magic, that is. And I think that that's something that could carry over a little bit to the NBA, although I definitely don't think he'll be able to be as high level of a rim protector there that he was at in the G League so far. The reason for that is that Diakite stands just 6'9". He does have an outstanding 7'2 wingspan, but the lack of height is something that could potentially end up hurting him in the long run, as I'm not sure that he'll be able to be a high-level individual one-on-one -on -one defensive player at the highest of levels. The uh, intriguing thing for me about Diakite on the defensive end of the court is his potential to be a more versatile big guy. He has shown a pretty solid ability to be a mobile big man who can switch off a little bit on the perimeter and certainly is capable of hedging and then recovering to his guy in the pick and roll. That kind of defensive versatility is certainly very valuable at the NBA level, and I think that in that way, Diakite could really help a team out. Do I think that this guy is ever going to be a starter? Maybe. It's possible. But will he ever be an all-star? Certainly not. I do think that Diakite will be a rotational piece, though, and I am excited to see what he can do with the Bucks. I'm pretty hopeful that he'll get some minutes at the backup four position for Milwaukee in this upcoming second half of the season. The last guy here is Miles Powell, who is a two-way player out of Seton Hall. The Bucks just recently signed him last week, and I think that it was a pretty decent signing. Powell was not someone that I had ranked as a player who I would have given a guaranteed contract, but in terms of two ways, he was a guy that I would have prioritized quite highly. So for the Bucks to nab him midway through the season after he played very well in the G League was a solid move. With the Westchester Knicks in the G League, he averaged 17.8 points on 44.6 three-point shooting, and I think that that shooting skill is definitely his best shot at being an NBA player. Shooting, as I mentioned with Nora and Merrill, is one of the most valuable things an NBA player can do in today's game. And I think that Powell is someone who's going to be able to do that at a very high level. The problem with him comes with the rest of his game. At just six foot two, you would think that he would probably be a point guard. However, he's not really a good enough passer to play that position, and he has a really hard time seeing open teammates and is more of a score first kind of guy. He also really struggles defensively and is not really someone who I think is capable of defending NBA players right now. There's certainly room for improvement here, and if he can get better with the passing and the defense, he could be an NBA rotational piece. However, I do think that it will take time, and unless Powell can become a top-notch shooter, he's really going to have to improve in those two areas if he wants to have a shot in the NBA. Overall, with the Bucks rookies, I think that they have a pretty clear order in terms of how much I value them in my mind. My first guy would be Merrill, who I think will certainly be a rotational piece for an NBA team. After him is Diakite, who I think has a shot to make it and perhaps has the most upside out of any of these four guys 
Third would be Nora, who has an NBA level skill, just needs to round out the rest of his game. And fourth would be Powell, who I'm not sure has the frame to really be an NBA player. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Bucks rookies in the comment section down below. Which one of them is your favorite? Which one of them do you think is most likely to flame out and not be part of this organization very soon? Let me know. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy all things Bucks. I'm going to be cranking out all kinds of Bucks coverage throughout the second half of the season. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for me. I will see you all again very soon.